So here, here they were, the two stars playing the back and 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 the 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 middle of Asia, the Germans call these things doodle. And if you were a piper, you were a doodle daughter. <laughs> one of the things that I find very clever was that in North Africa, they were two. Now, Burma Mama, the desert part, made it very, very, very clear. He was able to call it. He wanted to publish it every day. He was fighting the 51st Highland Division of the Army. And he was going on every day. So it never became a standing one. It is do not shoot the doodle gun. Now, this was not intended as a, a charitable or a humanitarian or a humane gesture. The fact was that if you point the fighter, the Highland didn't take part of it.
singing airs. A good tune just shouldn't be wasted by having only one purpose. And uh, Burns is no exception. I'm going to sing you a few dance tunes, a little bit of, of each one, one after the other, uh, some of which uh, are words by Burns, and others are ones maybe that he would have written if he lived a few hundred years longer. Uh, he wrote often beautiful words and, and sometimes funny words, sometimes very pointed words, using the traditional tunes. Um, and he wrote on all subjects, too. You, you'll hear about um, Willie selling his fiddle, or maybe not, uh, in order to buy a gram at the market. Um, Burns was a great one for loving the women, and uh, there are a few songs to various relationships of, of ladies in this set. Um, but oh, there's a, such a mundane topic as peas bros, which is a porridge made of peas, and uh, uh, very, various subjects will come and go throughout this. If you feel like getting up and dancing a bit, feel free. There was somebody, as I was warming up back in the back of the hall, who got up and danced a few steps. You'll, you'll hear a, a slip jig, some reels, a few regular normal jigs, a couple of stress space, and uh, Toddlin' Hain, which uh, it can be a jig, but it'll be a waltz this time. If you know that one, go ahead and sing along with the folks. Oh, rapping and roaring, pretty a piece of tea, a pair for it to sell, his fiddle and bass of all our wear, part of the quickest fiddle of a soldier, and silly, a rapping and roaring, pretty your welcome thing to me. I'll send your fiddle, so will you, I'll send your fiddle, so fine, send your fiddle, so will you, I'll buy your pint of white, for us to sell my fiddle, no work for coffee, man, penny the wax and crack this fiddle, and I may have.
bagpipes are so loud, that's so the hard of hearing can hate them too. <laughs> Actually, we love our bagpipers, but we all do this in fun. We like to, we like to kid them a little bit. I did want to mention that Mr. John Langdon is celebrating his 45th birthday. He's the publisher of the Umpqua Weekly Examiner that gave us some very fine coverage, and we, we uh, forgot to acknowledge him in our program, but we would like to give him a hand for it. be a wonderful special on Oregon PBS TV tomorrow at about 5 o'clock, a trip from Wales up into Edinburgh, and so you might want to tune that in. Some people have been referring to Robert Burns as Robbie, and uh, actually I, I understand that that is not uh, technically correct, and you wouldn't want to call him Bobby either, because that is an English nickname, and certainly you wouldn't want to do that. But in some of his own poems, he's referred to himself as Robin, Rob, or Rab. But uh, for the traditionalists, uh, we just want to pay this tribute tonight, uh, a celebration to the immortal memory of Robert Burns. And so we'll remember to name him Collins by his, his truth name. And now uh, we have an interesting uh, part of the program coming up. And that is Mr. Jack Shively who is going to do a song for you. And it's got something to do with what is worn beneath the kilt. There's a number of answers to that question. And that was the one question that Hector Smith was referring to that he didn't particularly want to answer. But every Scotsman has at least one or two lines in response to that question about what is worn beneath the kilt. Um, shoes and socks is one of them. <laughs> Another one might be nothing, honey. Or, as you might find in this uh, next stump song that Jack's going to sing for you, uh, something else that might be more than you should kill. But anyway, here's Jack Shiver. Put your hands together and bring him out. Armadale Castle there. And uh, this one woman from Georgia went up to a rather dapper uh, Scotsman that was decked out in the full Bonnie Prince Charlie jacket and the kilt and all the accoutrements and said, Sir, can you tell me what is more beneath your kilt? And she looked at him, well, he looked at her, I should say, and bristled his eyebrows a little bit and said, Lassie, what is worn beneath the kilt is not worn at all, but is like brand new. <laughs> so anyway, Jack's got a song for you now called The Scotsman. <laughs> Scotsman clad in kilt left about one evening day. And one could tell by how he walked, he drunk more than he shared. He fumbled around until he could no longer keep his feet. Then he stumbled on beside the grass, to sleep beside the street. Ringing dilly 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 oh, ringing dilly dilly oh. He stumbled on beside the grass, to sleep beside the street. Now about that time, two young and lovely girls just happened by. And one said to the other, with a twinkle in her eye, See our sleeping Scotsman, so strong and handsome built. I wonder if it's true what they don't wear beneath the kilt. Ring ding dilly laddy o, oh, ring ding dilly i o. Oh. I wonder if it's true what they don't wear beneath the kilt. They crept upon that sleeping Scotsman quiet as could be. They lifted up his kilt about an inch so they could see. And there the hole for them to view beneath his Scottish skirt. Twas nothing more than God had graced him with upon his word. Leave a present for our friend before we move along. For a gift they left a blue silk ribbon tied into a bow. And around the bonny star the Scots killed in Liverpool. Ring ding diddle diddle I O, ring ding diddle I O. And around the bonny star the Scots killed. 
kilt did lift and show. Now the Scotsman woke to Nation's cause, and he stumbled toward the trees. Behind the bush he lifts his kilt. at what he sees, <laughs> and in a startled voice he said to what's before his eyes, Ah oh, lad, I don't know where you've been, but I see you won first prize. <laughs> Dancing, when all of a sudden 
someone might say, let's do an some reel. And they would all break into a set for a, a big reel, and they would get down with some real fine traditional music. And that's what we've got next with the Roseburg Folk Dancers. So let's welcome them out to the stage. Pythias Hall uh, at about 7.30, and uh, if you'd like to learn some folk dancing from not only Scotland, but from Eastern European countries as well, uh, they would love to have you join them on a Friday evening in, in the hall. So here they are to do the Posties Jig.
Scottish household is uh, at the head of the table with your back to the door. And the folklore legend goes that Johnny Groves House, which that dance was named after, was built circular in a round fashion, and they had a round table in the center so that no one of the of the uh, sons or the head of the household, the father, actually got that seat of honor. But that was the story behind Johnny Groves House and the dance that you just saw. Okay, now. Ah, see, what have we got coming up? Oh, okay. I'd like to ask you a question. What was Burns addressing when he said, My curse upon your venom stang that shoots my tortured goon Zelang? I told you earlier. The toothache. The toothache. Very good. Unfortunately, they sold all the sky tapes. I don't have any prizes for you then. So. Um, I would like to ask you the main was the nickname for which unsavory instrument? The what? It's just called the main. And it was a nickname for the Scottish guillotine. Hmm. I guess they had one of those back in the old days. Well, does anybody know the difference between a bagpipe and a trampoline? You take off your shoes before you jump on a trampoline. It's easy. Anyway, we've got a real treat for you coming up next. This is the uh, group that was featured in the Valley Viewer here in Roseburg uh, on Friday. And this is a group that has been practicing a lot. They're making their debut here tonight. They're an a cappella singing quartet uh, with music arranged and uh, composed by uh, Lana Walter Graff. And uh, they have taken some of Bird's poems, which had actually already been set to music, but they decided to provide music of their own. Um, to some of Burns' poems. And they'll be doing three of those for you tonight. Uh, please welcome Caroline. Thank you. 
converted from a, a, an ancient old singing song or into a pipe tune. In any event, the word is, words are Gaelic and uh, rather humorously some of the band members have renamed it. Uh, so that when I call it when we're on parade, I now call it as Blue Varnish. In any way, we know what the tune goes like. It's a pretty thing. It used to be a sort of a, a lullaby sung in the north of Scotland and in the western north. 